Hey guys, you're here live with MVI. Happy Memorial Day. Um, so I've got a customer with a 2018 Chevy Silverado that came in from Texas um, that wants us to install a camera system. So pretty big project um, for us to do the next couple days. And I needed a video to uh, show the connections in normal speed for our um, GM multi uh, camera auto switching with split view, basically the GM and telehaul um, camera module. So I'm gonna show you that this morning along with, uh, this will be a you know two, three part video. Um, I'm gonna start with installing the, um, the camera module up here behind the screen. So I've got good footage of that. And then I'll be doing a uh, third brake light and wireless install today. Also a front camera, those will be separate videos. So I'll kind of show you as we go, but as you can see, we've got a uh, factory interface here, 18 Silverado, factory nav, app store, all that good stuff. And we are gonna add the um, auto switching that will pull up left and right cameras um, with the turn signals, front camera, which also auto triggers in parking situations, and um, our wireless and cargo camera. So I'll get started here. So. Um, to start with, you're going to need for this installation a uh, pry tools of some sort to get this outer edge off. Um, some clippers, wire clippers, uh, crimpers. I'll show you that here in a few. Strippers also come in handy. Magnet always comes in handy in case you uh, drop some screws, etc. And a couple picks. These are all easily gotten at, um, well, on Amazon these days, easily. Uh, Home Depot, Lowe's usually carries these as well. The 90 degree and the straight um, pick are the way to go. So to start, we will get this dash panel off. And that's simply going to just pop right off, guys. So let's have some clips holding it in place. And this bottom one does get aggressive and a clip will typically pop off which you'll want to pop right back onto its proper spot we've got one laying down here which i'll get that's also where the uh magnet can come in handy let's pop that back on your fingers aren't good you can um, utilize those picks to help you unplug this stuff and we're just gonna get it out of our way. Four, seven mils right here, guys. Screen will pop right out. One Molex plug here, screen LVDS, your AC controls, this guy will set aside. All right, in the kit. Use this as your connections video. Well, you'll see a big sticker on here that says 2017 down. All the rest will be up. That is pointed out in the instruction manual as well, which We'll guide you through what I just did, getting the screen out, accessing things and whatnot. But in the back, we'll tell you the dip switches and what they need to be. Also to point out, it tells you the camera inputs, which is nice to know for this harness here. Now we are gonna start uh, shipping from another location in order to try and get more uh, product out. Um, so these harnesses, you know, I'm hoping we'll continue to label them, but they may not always be, but they are labeled from the manufacturer, camera one, two, three, and four. This points it out right here, guys. Camera one, driver's door, camera two, passenger door. So just plug in accordingly. Uh, camera three can be your front camera and or trailer camera. So if you're doing a front camera, there's a step I'll show you once you get it powered up to activate front camera. So you want your front camera plugged into camera three. And then camera four is always going to be your rears. So if you're doing a cargo, so your rear tailgate, um, cargo camera for fifth wheel, and our wire wireless camera with our switcher um, would plug into camera four. So I'll show you that. 
dip switches right here, guys. So all self-explanatory. I try and highlight these. Again, we are going to start shipping from another location. It may get missed, so utilize this video. Up is going to be for all you 8-inch screen guys. That's 99.9% .9 of our customers. Um, up for OEM camera, people get mixed up on this. So if you're going to add a camera, if it doesn't have one, tailgate camera, you would flip this down. But 99.9% .9 of the time, it's going to go up. Um, seven is down for 17 and up models. And then you're always going to want it up for normal operations. So um, good stuff to point out there in the instructions. So with that said... I'm going to move switch three down and it's all set to install, ready to go. Now, we'll come back and install this later, but this is our harness with all our camera inputs. So, I'll show you that here momentarily. Um, but can't really mess this up, guys. This just plugs in right here, obviously. Okay. And then for the most part, all our cameras are going to, you know, we're going to come through the dash for everything, and they will all plug in to these harnesses. Now, I've got other harnesses involved that will plug into these, um, but I like to route it over here, so I'm going to get rid of this, uh, pull this AC vent out here, which I'll do next. That's going to allow me to stash all my harnessing right here in this area because this is going to sit in here just like this, guys, um, which I'll show you that here in a moment as well. So uh, before we get too far ahead, this is your LVDS connection. This is pointed out in the instructions. Does not connect to the screen. Connects over here behind the glove box. So um, obviously it's going to plug in there. And then route over to the glove box area, which I'll show you here in just a moment, and plug in there. So just like that. This is only going to leave our power and ground here. Okay, this does tee into the screen, so it makes it nice and simple. Super easy, guys. Can't really mess this up. So just follow this video paper instructions, you'll be fine. This is simply just gonna plug in right here. Then this will plug right back into our screen when we're all said and done. So with that said, go ahead and get this guy out of the way. up there next is the glove box so I'll take you over that direction t15 is what you need for the glove box guys so i'm going to get over that direction this stuff is pretty much going to fall out i'll see if i can get it out without doing so Four T-15s. Two down here. Snap it just like that. And I'm going to bring this down without dumping everything out. Set it aside, get it out of your way. Now, your HMI sits right here, guys. So, 
working with the J5 plug, which is the blue USB. So you're just gonna go grab it and unplug it. Gotta kind of pay attention to where you route things, guys, so stuff can go in without binding. So, um, this guy here, just gonna plug right in to where we unplugged, okay? And this will go right back to where the factory blew up. Make sure it clicks in. I'll come back and tie all this up nice and neat. This allows us to route this up here nice. Again, you don't have to do all this. I like to make things look factory. Never take this in to get worked on. Don't want a bunch of wires looking a mess in here, guys. I'm just gonna upset the technician. He's not gonna wanna work on your car. So make things look as factory as possible. So now we're all set there. Now, depending on which module, I have two different modules I send. Um, some of them won't have this labeling here on it. It'll look slightly different and it won't have this bracket in the kit, okay? So if it doesn't have the bracket, what you want to do is basically take these guys off. And I do, you can wrap this on here like this. Let me just go ahead and show you that. So first thing I like to do is take these guys off. Let's pop these guys right off. So I'm not going to stick this, but you can tell if I wrap this like this, it allows this to slide under there snug so it doesn't rattle. This foam allows that to fit nice and snug, guys. So I'm going to try and get you back over there. Hopefully that's a good picture angle. So again, if your kit does not have this bracket, Take those rubbers off the bottom, wrap it in this felt, and it's just gonna sit snug under there. Not gonna go anywhere once it's once it's all put back together. So that's kind of what that's for there. But this one does have the bracket. Basically, we are going to, so it's got four screws that will attach right to the bottom of here. Okay. Then these holes are designed to kind of hold your harnesses right in place. It's all kind of overkill, but I'll go ahead and do all that to show you what's up. So if you're gonna use this bracket, do go ahead and keep these on here. four really tiny screw guys let me get the uh, you don't need much just the pocket phillips will do but i don't have to get in there and grip the teeth of the screw and this can be a bit of a challenge not the proper light now i will tell you this guys you don't want to go tight with these at all just snug it i've seen where these get wrenched down it actually bows the circuit board in here. It's not a real good design by, in fact, it's kind of why I prefer not to use this bracket, but. All right, now this is designed. I'm gonna go ahead and do this here for you guys. 
not required, but this will be the full. So, kind of overkill. Some protection on your interior. Now you don't have to do this. These things aren't going anywhere, guys, but give you the full experience here. And you can see this is kind of off anyway, so I'm not even gonna worry about that one. So now this is designed to slide right in here. Make things out of my way. Also, I'll point out, you always want to make sure your dip switches are still where they need to be. I've seen those change as you push this into place. All right, so now what do we got here? I've got more work on this, but this will nicely come into here. And if camera four, which is the rears, needs to come over this direction, I can just pull it right through there and get it over here to plug in in my switcher setup. So I'll show you those later on, but for now I'm to where I can go ahead and uh, plug this back in and power it up and, and that's pretty much it for the module. So let's go ahead and do that. So that said, we should be able to fire it right up. If 
Factory screen, that's a good sign. And how you activate the module on these guys is the back button. So you're gonna press and hold. And we've got our modules working. So uh, full left, right, split view. If you wanna do your um, rear, rear uh, wireless and your left, right turn at the same time, you can, nothing's hooked up. So I'll come back and show you all that. Now this is, remember I told you, uh, camera three, which is here, can be uh, your trailer and or your front. So if you're not using, um, utilizing a front camera, you can actually do without the switcher, which I'll show you when I get there, and use this icon and this con icon, so your cargo and then your rear wireless if you wanted to. Otherwise, you're gonna tie all your rears into this guy here, go into your settings, and now I'm gonna enable front uh, camera by doing these two, and you'll see that switch to front. So, um, does auto activate with the turn signals. So you know you've got it all hooked up. And this could go back together once I've got the cameras on. So, um, next I'm gonna go ahead and start on the uh, rear cargo, um, third brake light, and the wireless uh, receiver up front anyway. So, show you all that next. That'll be in the next video. But for now, that's the installation of our GM multi-camera auto switching split view, basically our GM IntelliHall. So, full install, all the connections, out of the box, there you have it, as usual, messages for any questions.